Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, Konami might be killing off its gaming business. A GTA Online cheap maker got shut down, Cyberpunk 2077 shattered digital sales records, and much more. Konami are restructuring their entire company, dissolving three production companies, two of those divisions are responsible for gaming production. This was revealed in an investor announcement. At first, media outlets took it to mean Konami are shutting down their gaming brand, but in a follow-up, Konami made it clear that the production divisions were being consolidated, not dissolved. In the past, Konami has been known for hit franchises like Silent Hill, Metal Gear Solid, and Pro Evolution Soccer. Their gaming brand's reputation took a nosedive in 2005 when they fired Hideo Kojima. Around the same time, Konami did a similar restructure of their entire business. Since then, they've kept producing entries in their top franchises, but Pro Evolution Soccer seems to be the only one that's still doing well. It's unclear what this restructuring means for Konami's future. Like many companies during the pandemic, Konami have likely had to make drastic changes to how they do business. It could be the restructure is an effort to refocus the company into a more streamlined and efficient business, but it could also mean Konami are even less interested in game development than before. Firing Kojima seems like it was a turning point for the company from one that makes games to focusing on overseeing their subsidiaries and developing mobile games. While many think of Konami as a big game studio, the reality is they own 22 companies located around the world, all developing everything from software and games to managing real estate and manufacturing. A GTA Online cheat maker has been forced to shut their operation down and donate all of their money to charity by Take-Two. Luna Cheats issued a statement on their website announcing the shutdown recently. Take-Two threatened legal action against Luna Cheats if they continued their operation. Their mod menu included some of the most popular cheats around like God Mode, Invisibility, Griefing Tools that let you kick other players, and even the ability to block people from reporting you. Take-Two have a history of using the legal system to shut down big players in the cheating scene. So far, this is the fifth cheat site they've gotten shut down. As more companies turn to the legal system, it seems like only a matter of time before we see change in the way cheats are distributed. Operating in public puts a target on the back of cheat makers. Assuming none of them win in court against a developer or publisher, it seems unlikely that the current model of hosting a public website and using mainstream payment services like PayPal will be viable for cheat developers in the long term. Cheating is also becoming a topic of legislation in many countries. For instance, South Korea views cheating and developing cheats cheats for games is a crime and has prosecuted several cases. Fighting cheats with software will always be an uphill battle, but taking them to court and making it illegal to distribute cheats could greatly impact their prevalence. Cyberpunk 2077 officially had the biggest digital launch of any game in history. It sold an estimated 10.2 million digital copies on PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox in December. At least 80% of Cyberpunk sales were digital. And the crazy thing is, these numbers actually account for refunds and the fact that Sony delisted the game from the PlayStation Network. It gets even crazier when you consider the bulk of sales happened in the game's first week. Despite all the controversy and negative reviews, Cyberpunk set a new benchmark for sales. As for the game's first major update of the year, it introduced a rather nasty bug that halts progress through the game's main story. The developers are currently working on a hotfix to sort this particular bug out, but have posted a workaround on their support site for now. If you're having issues with Takamura not starting his dialogue during the Down on the Street quest, try these steps. If you complete the quest before the update went live, you should be fine. Aside from talking about this bug, CD Projekt Red have been relatively quiet about their next major patch. The most recent update was intended to lay the groundwork for future improvements, so it wasn't an earth-shattering update that some players were expecting. The next patch should be out in a few weeks and will hopefully be a mega update that fixes the game's most glaring problems. ID Software are developing a new VR title codenamed Project 2021A, according to a rating that was filed just a few days ago. Doom 2016 has a VR version, which led many people to assume 2021A is a VR port of Doom Eternal. It seems pretty likely, but ID might also be doing a VR Wolfenstein or Quake title. All we know for sure is they're making a VR game. Hitman 3 speedrunners have already whittled the game's first mission to a sub 10 second run. It's pretty typical to see speedrunners breaking games just a few days or weeks after launch, but it's pretty rare to see times this short. In Hitman's case, the short time seems to be more down to the design of the mission itself over any sort of exploits. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. We'll be bringing you daily game news all week long and posting our weekly recap on Saturday. 
Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Another company just acquired RuneScape's developers for the third time in five years. Developer Jagex is now owned by the Carlyle Group, the world's second largest private equity firm. The deal is likely worth more than $520 million. The acquisition means Jagex can devote more resources to the game and put out content faster. It also means they're in a better position to launch other titles. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.